My name is Jessica Kelton and I'm a regional agent for the farm and agribusiness management team. Today I just want to discuss a little bit about farm financial statements, what they are, what we use them for, and um, how you can use them on for your operation and moving forward. I want to start by talking about why we need financial statements. Um, financial statements, there are several of them that we'll discuss today, but um, really, these kind of give you an, an overview of how your operation is doing financially. Is it profitable? Is it losing money? What commodities, if you're producing multiple commodities, which ones are, um, are losing money? Which ones are making money? It can give you an idea of how much your operation owes. Um, and then ultimately, you can use it to determine if you can afford to do something different. If you're wanting to expand your operation, can you afford it? Do you need to replace equipment? Can you afford to, to purchase more equipment? Um, can you diversify? Um, ultimately, that's what your financial statements are all designed to help you do, to make decisions, the financial decisions on the farm. So what do we usually see growers using to um, make financial decisions on their farm? And, and unfortunately, a lot of times this is what most people see when they're looking at their finances. And this is kind of the only overview they see. And this is your Schedule F, your profit or loss from your farming. And this is how you file your taxes. If you're a farming operation, this is what you see. You report your income and you um, deduct your expenses. A lot of times you're um, depreciating some of your assets. Uh, and this just calculates how much income you're going to pay taxes on. And it, yes, it's a good something to be able to, to see how much income you're, you're making, but it doesn't really give you a full picture of how the operation is doing. So instead of just focusing on this, which we're gonna see one time a year, we really wanna look at the different financial statements. What are those options? What can we look at? We have several that we look at. There's a balance sheet, an income statement, a cash flow statement, and then a statement of owner's equity. So what do those look like? What do they mean? And how do we use each specific financial statement? So basically a balance sheet. The balance sheet is also called a net worth statement and it shows the assets, things you own um, and liabilities, the things that you owe money for on the farm on a specific date. So basically think of it kind of like your checkbook. When you open it up and you look at your checkbook, from your, um, whatever your balance is, is, it's a reflection of what your balance is today. And that's basically what a balance sheet does. It shows you what your balances of your assets and your li liabilities are for that specific day. Now, the next day, they may definitely change. It kind of gives you a, um, that snapshot for that day. Typically, when you're doing a, a balance sheet, you're going to have it start at the first of your year. If you're um, like most growers, you're going to start with, you know, your fiscal year is going to start in January. So you, it would be good to have a balance sheet as of January 1. So here you can kind of see what a um, just a generic balance sheet would look like. You have your farm assets on one side and then your farm liabilities on another side. For this one, it says current assets and fixed assets. A lot of times they break them down into three different groups. Assets and liabilities are typically broken down into three um, types, a current, an intermediate, and a long term. So what do these look like? A current asset, those things that you own, but you will probably sell within a year. So if you think about if you have livestock that you're planning on selling in a year, uh, stored grain, anything you've harvested, but you're storing on farm, that would be a current asset. Same goes for uh, liabilities. Current liabilities are things that you um, owe, they're due within one year. Most of the time when we think about a current liability, we're going to think about an operating loan something that we've um, taken out a loan to, to um, pay for our operating expenses. And once we harvest our crop or we sell our livestock, then we're gonna pay that operating loan back within that year. So intermediate assets and, and intermediate liabilities, um, typically the time frame for those is gonna be anything from one to 10 years. So a little longer than a current asset or liability and um, but not as long as a long term. So things that would kind of fall into this category, like machinery loans and um, machinery, uh, any equipment you own, typically um, it's going to be considered an intermediate asset um, after 10 years, then uh, or before less than 10 years. But in intermediate liabilities, the things you're going to pay over a longer time frame, like the equipment loans for that type of machinery. The last um, asset and liability category used on a balance sheet are your long-term assets and liabilities. And those are things that are kind of long-term, like the name suggests, um, but something greater than 10 years. 
So if you own land, that would be a long-term asset, but then the, um, if, you're, if you're paying a loan on that land, then that would be considered a long-term liability, something over um, num a number of years greater than 10. What do we use that balance sheet for? It gives us a, a snapshot of how we're doing, how much we ha how much we own, and how much we owe. Um, one of the problems with that is it really doesn't give us, again, um, each of these financial statements give us a little piece of the puzzle, but not a full and complete picture. So that's why we have other financial statements. Um, the other financial statement is an income statement. Now, this one's also referred to as a profit and loss statement or a P&L. A lot of times you'll hear it referred to as a P&L. And that shows you income expenses and expenses over a specific time. Usually you're looking at it over a year. Again, most growers are looking from January to December. And it shows you how much money you had come in that year and then what those spent expenses were um, over that same time frame. So if you look on here, um, you can kind of see um, there's different categories on here. Um, but if you look on one side, you see your, your income, um, and then you can see below that you have your expenses. Now, when you're doing these, you can usually find a lot of different templates online. So I would suggest looking for an ag-specific one. Sometimes it's not as easy to remember everything, so it's nice to have a template that kind of lays out to jog your memory of um, the different, where you're gonna have income and where you're gonna have expenses. So sometimes you may not remember, oh yes, I need to include, um, my fertilizer expenses in here. So this kind of gives you a breakdown and it shows you um, what your expenses were for the year in total and then how much um, income you had for the different commodities or the different operations on your farm. Another financial statement that growers can use to help make decisions on their farm is called a cash flow statement. And um, a cash flow statement just shows you how that money's coming into the farm. So we saw with an income statement, we saw how much was coming in and how much was leaving. But a cash flow kind of shows you how it comes in and how it leaves. So what you're making and what you spend. And then if you're looking at it over a year's time, specifically if you have it broken down into um, a monthly cash flow, it really kind of helps you see, okay, you know, unlike a lot of um, businesses where you have a steady income flow, it's not necessarily the case with farming operations. You don't have steady income every month. You know, you're waiting for your crop to, to be harvested before you start having income, or you're waiting for your cattle to get to the point where they're ready to be sold. So having a cash flow shows you, okay, maybe I'm not going to have cash coming in in January and February or March. Uh, maybe it's going to start in you know, July, August, September, October time frame. But when is that money coming in? And on the flip side of that, when do I have my large bills? When, you know, some of our utilities are due every month or maybe they're set up on a different payment plan. When am I going to have to make my um, payments for uh, my machinery? Is it broken into a monthly payment or do I have two months that are two months out of the year I'm making those large payments? But a cash flow shows you when the money's coming in and when it's going to leave. And that will kind of give you an idea of when am I going to need extra money if I'm not cash flowing and I don't have the cash on hand, when am I going to need to use, say, my operating loan to cover some, cover some of that outflow um, as I wait to, for, for my crops to be harvested and to have funds to, to be able to pay certain things. So that's what we use the cash flow for. There are some cash flows that are not designed to be a monthly. You may look at them as a quarterly system, but you can kind of gauge what works best for you. And if you really do have a lot of expenses, maybe not have um, monthly income, using a cash flow broken up over months may be able to help you better determine when am I going to need a, an influx of money, whether it's from you know operating loan or from some of my, you know if I'm planning on selling something, when am I going to need that money on hand to make those payments? Another um, financial statement that we can use is a statement of owner equity, and really that's just sh showing um, your net worth of the the farming operation and how it changes over time. So um, did the farm make or lose money, but also did your assets gain or lose value? So if you look at what a net uh, statement of um, owner's equity looks like, you can see um, it shows you, it shows you, it can show you a cost value and then a market value and show you what your farm worth, uh, net farm, farm net worth was at the beginning of the year and how that changes based on your assets and your income, how that changes over span of a year. Now, one of those things that all of these financial statements have in common 
is that some of these um, statements can be used to determine financial ratios. And those ratios, I'm not going to go into it. If, um, we can get you some information if you want to look at those ratios. And they kind of give you a kind of a, um, depending on which financial statement you're looking at, what um, numbers you're looking at, those ratios can kind of give you an idea. Hey, do I have too much debt? Um, am I in a good position financially based on what my ratios say for um, this aspect of my farm? Do I have too much um, current liabilities? Do I need to think about restructuring some of my loans so that I don't it kind of get an, an indicator of are we are we in the clear? Do we look like we're we're in trouble? We could get into trouble as we move, you know, a few years down the road. Or are we in trouble now? So a lot of those um, ratios that you can gather that information from these different financial statements can be used to help you determine what kind of um, decisions you're going to make for the farm. And like I said, I'm not going to put in, I'm not going to talk about any of that today. But if you want some information, I can definitely get you. Um, some information on and how to calculate those financial ratios. But to calculate financial ratios, you definitely have to have these financial statements um, in front of you to look at. So having said that, how do you develop your own statements? A lot of times we can get some of this information from our lenders. Our lenders are going to be put plugging in some of this information to make um, decisions on loans, whether they're, you know, if you ask to see that information or not, they're still going to use some of that information to determine um, risk when they're, they're making those loans. But we can go in and make our own uh, financial statements. It will take a little bit of time. Once you get into the habit of doing it, it is a little easier from year to year to be able to build on what you do originally. Uh, like I said earlier, using ag-specific financial statements definitely save a lot of time. And one of the ones that I found was the, the best and easiest to use is developed from Iowa State Extension. You can go to this website. Um, and it will take you to the free templates to create your own financial statements. Again, it, it is something that can, can take a little bit of time, but putting in that effort on the front end is definitely better than trying to use just your Schedule F to make decisions for your farm because you really just don't have a full picture of what's going on in your farm until you start breaking it down and looking at it um, in detail with how the financial statements allow you to do. So as I said, there's a lot more information out there that we could discuss. If you have any specific questions, feel free to contact me, 334-405-0699, or feel free to give me a, um, just send me an email at the email on the screen. So thanks again.